So when you run PowerShell commands, usually one of two things happens. Either it works or it doesn't. And we get messages displayed to us based on what happens. So I have two commands here. Let's go ahead and run both of them and see what happens. So you'll see the first example, we got an error. The second example, we got the standard uh, successful message for running the new item commandlet because I used force. And uh, since this file exists, um, we get these two different results. Uh, if we're trying to automate stuff, we want to have more control over uh, not just what happens in the background, but what happens um, up front and what people can see. So uh, we want to be able to control the flow of what gets displayed to the console, and that brings us to the subject of redirection. And there's lots of ways to do this in PowerShell. We're just going to go over um, a couple of different ways and see some examples. So. Um, we want to change how this happens. What can we do? Well, one thing that we can do is we can pipe the results to a commandlet called out null. And basically, it takes the output of um, a command and it throws it away. So let's add this code to our commandlets and see what happens. Uh, and you'll notice that now our successful message was not displayed out null took the result and it just threw it away in the trash but the error was shown so um, out null is a way that we can suppress um, the successful standard information that's displayed to the console but it does not um, suppress the error information so uh, what we can do is use another construct in PowerShell called the redirect operator and it functions similar to um, this pipeline that we use. So let's come down here. Uh, you'll see we just have a number of examples using the uh, same commandlet, creating an item at that location. Um, but we have this new little symbol, and this is the redirection symbol. Uh, and this symbol is what lets us redirect the flow of information uh, to different places. So in this case, I'm redirecting it to the uh, null variable, which is essentially the same thing as pipelining to out null. Out null throws it away. Uh, this redirection symbol simply gives us more flexibility and more control um, over the information. So let's look at the different options that we have with the redirection symbol. Uh, in this case, I'm creating a file and it should not work um, because we are not using force. So it does not work and our error is displayed. Let's say uh, that we want to be able to suppress the error. We could not do that without null. So in this case, we can add a 2 in front of the redirection symbol. Let's go ahead and run it. And you'll see that the error is now uh, suppressed. That is because um, when you think of console output, you, you have to think of the errors and the standard, standard output as two different streams or, or channels or kind of roadways and uh, you have to be specific in which way um, you direct the traffic from that roadway so the two specifies that we want the error channel and if we remove it uh, we're telling it to uh, redirect the standard successful um, information so that is uh, something to keep in mind uh, let's look at some other stuff that we can do with the redirection symbol um, in this case, you'll see that I'm passing it to a different variable. This variable it contains a different file location, and um, this should work. So I'm going to go ahead and run it, and you'll see that the error was not displayed on the screen. But if I go ahead and open up the file where I redirected it to, we have some error information in here. And not only... Um, not only one, but we have multiple... Uh, lines of information. That's because if you use the double redirector, it tells the um, output to be appended rather than overwritten. So if I do this and open it back up, you'll see that it overwrites the file. Um, so that adds a extra layer of control to um, how we can take the information uh, from our commands. So we can redirect it to the null to simply throw it away we can um, redirect it to a file 
we can choose which stream that we want to pull the information from, either the standard flow of information or we can pull it from the error flow. Um, and let's say that we want to capture both. Well, we have uh, another little symbol sequence here. Let's go down. Um, this right here basically means to grab the error stream and add the standard stream to the error stream. Uh, so that will capture everything and then you can append it to a file. And it, it won't work um, if you just give it the file name. So one thing you can do uh, to get around that is just to pipe all of that to out file and then give it the location. So um, that will capture everything, the standard uh, and the errors and output it to a file. So that's uh, another way that you can uh, just grab everything. Um, and all that's really good if you want to capture this stuff at the end of um, a sequence of commands. But let's say that you're doing a long sequence and um, maybe you want to take certain results in the middle of that sequence of commands and store it somewhere and then continue processing that information. Well, there's another commandlet that offers uh, some cool features like that. So in this command sequence, you'll see that I'm basically just grabbing get process information. Um, and then I'm handling, I'm handing it off to this commandlet called T object. And the T object has a couple of different parameters. The one I'm using right now is the file path and I'm providing it the location of that file. Um, but then I'm piping the information again to select object and I'm refining that information further and then organizing it as a table and having it auto size. So let's run this now. And you'll see what gets displayed is not the regular get process information. I'm only pulling the process name and CPU. Uh, but if I open up this um, file that I provided to T object, oh, that's not the, the right one. We have the full get process information. Um, so that is a way that you can take the output um, from within the middle of a sequence and you can provide it either a file path or there's also um, a variable. You can supply it a variable name if you want to put it to a variable. You can use the append to have it append um, much like the double uh, arrow redirector. So those um, are a few different ways that you can take the information that people would see uh, displayed to the console, either from the error streams or from the standard output streams, um, and have it sent to either the trash bin, uh, variables, or, or files. And uh, that gives you more control over what happens when you're automating your processes uh, so that you can make your scripts look really clean. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.